Sup y'all, it's me, it's yo boy fanfic audiobooks, enjoy the story, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Also comment what you want to see next in the channel, let's start. Piccolo, Krillin and Gohan hopped to another island and stopped as they approached their destination, at last where they stood on grass, as there was a cliff there in front of them. All right, I'm sensing that those power levels are right in front of that cliff, Krillin exclaimed. Yeah, I can sense them as well, Piccolo started to walk over the top of the cliff along with the others as well. Make sure to suppress your power as low as possible, we can't risk any chance of getting caught whatsoever. Right Gohan and Krillin said creeping towards the top of the cliff till they reached towards its edge. When they did they laid down flat looking down on the site below, on what looked like a small Namekian village with three of the most powerful crew from before standing there. What is even going on here? It's one thing that we have to go through fighting Vegeta all over again, but these guys showed up out of nowhere. Who even are they anyway? Krillin exclaimed. The bigger question is, what are they up to? The lackeys are barely a concern, it's those three over there that worry me the most, especially the one in the middle, the power coming from him is beyond monstrous, said Piccolo feeling a cold shiver running down his spine from sensing this monster's power. Krillin then looked closer and gasped when he saw what the other men were holding the Namekian dragon balls, it was the sheer size of them that shocked him they looked like the size of basketballs easily. Hey guys look. The one with the hair and the pink one, look what they are holding. Gohan and Piccolo did so, and they were also surprised at what they saw. Holy crap look at the size of those things. I didn't know dragon balls could look so big like that. Krillin unintentionally let his voice get louder by his statement, which prompted Dodoria to look over to the cliff, and he saw nothing out there. Frieza noticed by the expression on his face. Is something the matter Dodoria? A small power level just appeared on my scouter on that cliff over there, whatever it was it's gone now, A, it was probably some insect or something Dodoria shrugged. On the cliff Piccolo was covering Krillin's mouth with his arms giving him a piercing glare, while Gohan was covering his mouth as he was shaking from just nearly being discovered. You moron! Are you trying to get us caught here? You were this close to blow our cover. Piccolo whispered harshly on Krillin's ear. Sweat was getting covered on the bald man's head feeling intimidated by the green man's glare. I'm sorry. I won't do it again, I promise, he said with his muffled tone. Down below Frieza's henchmen were forcing a group of Namekians to come outside out of a house from youngest to oldest with only surprisingly five of them. Wow, that guy looks like Piccolo. Except a lot older Gohan thought, when suddenly a thought struck him. Hey, do you think that these guys below are Cyans? he asked Piccolo and Krillin. Piccolo shook his head, as he let go of Krillin. I highly doubt it, they may be wearing the same battle armor, but no one has tail here at all. Hey wait a minute, didn't Goku's big brother said about some crew? The ones where they go through planets to planets eliminating all life on them. Are these the same guys he was talking about? Krillin asked and this time made sure to be quiet. I can't be too sure, but it is possible, although if that was the case then shouldn't Vegeta be here with them right now. I can't see him anywhere, Piccolo said. Maybe he's looking for the dragon balls for them. Down below one of the elder Namek's known as Mori was glaring down at Frieza when he saw his people's dragon balls hanging with the others within each arm. Greetings, my name is Frieza, and as you can quite see I'm quite a collector of the dragon balls you have here, the tyrant spoke in a casual tone. Now that I introduced myself, I expect you to repay the kindness by telling me where the rest of your village is hiding the rest of the dragon balls. Mori started to speak in his Namekian language in an effort to confuse Frieza, but he wasn't buying it at all. A good effort my dear friend, but I'm afraid that won't work on me. I'm waiting for you to speak the language we are addressing to you not this gibberish crap. Damn he didn't have a choice now. As I said before the others are tilling the land, only the old go and the young stay behind them, I speak the truth. Mori remarked. Very good. See that wasn't so hard now was it? 
Frieza said mockingly. If you continue to operate with us then you won't have anything to fear. Now then, let's move on to more pressing matters shall we? I believe that you have a dragon ball of your own don't you? I want you to give it to me immediately. What? Oh don't play dumb with. Me you know exactly what I'm talking about. Dodoria didn't that other Namikian said something quite intriguing before we came here. Yes he did my lord, he said something very interesting, something about not handing his dragon ball unless it was to someone worthy. Indeed he was quite a fellow to deal with, try as we might we couldn't get him to say anything more, well not at least we killed one of his kind, the other Namikians gasped at this revelation. Once that was settled with he decided to tell us everything, about how the Grand Elder of this planet created seven Dragon Balls and each one was handed over to a Guardian to protect them, how it required someone to hand them over to an individual who was deemed worthy etc etc. And as you can quite imagine, I had a difficult time convincing the poor fellow to deem me as worthy, this is where his tone started to become agitated. Then he flat out told me I wasn't worthy to even have a single Dragon Ball, I have never been the person to take bad news well. You're a liar, another elder Namikian spoke furiously. No one would ever hand over our Dragon Ball to someone as pure evil as you. Oh ho ho, I'm afraid that is where you are wrong, once I have shown some demonstration on what happens when someone disobeys me they were ecstatic to hand over their prized possession. And since you're doing the same thing. Oh he was gonna enjoy this again. Zabin, if you may. As you wish my lord, the handsome blue alien said phasing out of sight surprising all the Namikians with his speed. He appeared hovering the air next to an old Namikian, but before the old Namek could even turn around Zabin kicked him in the neck sending him flying back, as the sounds of the bones crunching were heard before he went through a house. You bastard! Zabin turned around to see another Namek charging at him firing an energy blast at him. Zabin easily flied in the air dodging the blast which did kill one of his lord's soldiers, but that didn't matter to him. He got high enough in the air where he was charging up an energy blast of his own and fired it back at the Namek who tried to attack him. It went too fast for the old man and so the blast hit him directly making him yell out in agony before he lied flat down on the ground as the pupils in his eyes vanished indicating that he was already. Mori and the children that were holding on to him looked horrified by this. Those rotten bastards, how could they just do that? Krillin silently said clenching his fists in anger along with Gohan and Piccolo. Now that should make things a little easier don't you think? So as I was saying beforehand over the Dragon Ball to me, or else you're going to suffer the same threat your little friends just went through. Mori kept glancing his on his right side, and between freezer back and forth. No, I can't give him the dragon ball yet. I need to buy more time till they at least get here, the elder thought. What wish do you seek then? Oh nothing much really it's rather a small wish, my wish to have eternal life bestowed upon me that's all. That's absurd. I could never give you the dragon ball for something so selfish as that. Oh really? And here I thought we were coming to an agreement. Freeze aside. Oh well, I suppose you'll have to die as well, he was about to give command to kill this old Namek, but he stopped himself to look at the scared little Namek children covering around the elder, this gave him a better idea. That is, unless you want these little ones to die first, and they look so young as well, it would be almost a shame if they got killed so early, well almost. Mori couldn't believe what he just heard from him. Disbelief took over looking at this cruel being in front of him. No. You wouldn't dare. Do you want to test me? Unless you want these children to die then make a smart decision old man. Either you give me the dragon ball and we'll leave you in peace or refuse and everyone here on this planet dies. What's it going to be? He had no idea why it was happening, but somehow Piccolo felt like something was gonna snap in him at any given moment. He was seething in silent anger. He didn't know why he was doing it anyways, the thought of these people dying who had a fave that were extremely similar to his was making his alien blood boil. I have to calm down, 
I can't let my anger get the better of me, focus, you're only here to observe not to engage. As much as this lizard freak makes me sick if I go in there I'm only going to make a worthless death. Gohan on the other hand looked like he was about to go in there as a tiny bit of his power spiked up, which Piccolo already noticed, and he put his green hand on the boy's shoulder. Don't even think about going in there. But if I don't all of them are going to die. Gohan, listen to me, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. I want to get in there as much as you do, but we can't go there blindly, the three. Of us combined might be able to take out the minions, but the one in the middle would just kill us like we are nothing. So just stay calm and don't do anything, got it? Gohan looked at his mentor. He hated to admit this, but he was right. As angry as he was going in there was absolutely suicidal, and the odds of them getting out alive would take a miracle to do that. All right, fine, you win. Dodoria's scouter started to beep again. There's a strong power level here nearby, this alerted everyone in the freezer squad, as they were only looking at their side only. Then out of nowhere flew in three Namekian warriors surprising nearly everyone in the field. The children and the elder smiled widely. Yes they made it. Mori exclaimed happily. Oh good, these guys might be the warriors on this planet, their power isn't much, but at least someone else made it here to fight Piccolo thought with relief thankful that some backup besides them has arrived. My my, that was quite rude you know, you interrupted us in the middle of our chat, and just when we were starting to agree on something Frieza remarked in amusement looking at the rest of the Namekian warriors. Although I am curious to know how strong all of you are, Tum Dodoria. Of course my lord, the fat pink fighter clicked on the button of his scouter scanning the green warriors. He chuckled to himself when he saw the numbers display. Ha! Huh. You gotta be kidding me. This has to be some kind of joke their power levels are only over a 1000. The rest of the soldiers were laughing at this. You can't be serious. Only a power level of 1000. How are you gonna hope to take us on with something that weak? Wouldn't they at least know that they are suppressing their full power? Sheesh. For a fighting crew these guys are clueless, Krillin remarked. Yes, now I understand, we always avoided our gatherings as far as we could from one another, but these fiends, those devices tell them exactly where we are. The good news is that there onto seem to be three of them left, if I can somehow take them out then they won't be able to track the rest of us. If they can only get distracted. Thought Mori. The soldiers were starting to attack the other Namekians ready to take them out by their lord's name. However everyone else became surprised when the Namekian warriors were actually capable of fighting them, actually no it wasn't just that the army were getting absolutely annihilated by then in a stunning display of power. The soldiers kept getting sent everywhere within every blow they were dealt with which made Frieza be somewhat impressed with them. This had him, Zabin and Dodoria look over at the fight, and it gave the elder a distraction he needed. Children, I need you to get away from here right now, he tried to gently push them behind him, but they only seemed confused and surprised of what he said. Quickly, there isn't much time left. I have to give them credit, they are not bad in their own right, Frieza commented. Though I wonder how long they could last against you too, hum what do you say Dodoria? I'd gladly do it, I was looking for some workout anyways, the fat pink fighter said as he put the balls down on the ground. Ha, the elder fired an energy beam that came from his fingertip which caught everyone off guard as Dodoria's scouter got destroyed. Hey punk. If you wanted to have fight you made a big mistake coming after me. Mori didn't listen, instead he filled in the air firing two more energy beams destroying all of the remaining scouters left on the foot soldiers. Dodoria you're a fool. He was after the scouters. Zabin exclaimed. Dodoria just stood there dumbfounded at what just happened before he felt a spark infusing making him see red. That is it. I've had about all I can take from this crap. I'm gonna kill every single one of you bastards. He started to fly in the air going after the elder. Starting with you. Ha. Huh. Dodoria, stop this right now. 
Frieza's tone turned to one with frustrated anger screaming at the fat soldier, which prompted him to stop before looking at his lord in confusion. If you want to vent out your rage then just start with every last one of these Nameks, before you go after the elder. Dodoria really wished that this wasn't the case, he just wanted to go after everyone on this damn planet right now, but he knew better than to make Frieza angry at him. So he flew back down on the ground and did as he was told. He vented his anger by attacking the warriors, as he kept phasing and reappearing, but the warriors couldn't react as Dodoria was too fast for them. Everything went downhill from then, as it took Dodoria barely few blows to take them out before he murdered them with his bare hands by shoving them through their guts. Well, has it finally gotten through thick skull of yours? Even you must know that your strongest warriors were no match for mine, Frieza remarked looking at the horrified expression. On the elder's face. So how about you come back down and proceed where we left before? Mora gritted his teeth not believing that his plan had backfired on him this drastically. This was it there was no other choice, he had to give up the dragon ball to this monster. So with that he flew back down on the ground. Now I'm sure you have already learned your lesson, but I would still like an apology. If you just give me the dragon ball we'll forget this whole thing ever happened in the first place. Very well then, I have no choice, I'll give you what you want, but you must promise me that you won't harm the children. Frieza's smirk somehow grew wider. All right then, I won't. Mori went to his house to get the ball so this tyrant could leave his planet and never come back. On the cliff Gohan looked like he was about to blow a fuse at any moment now, he wanted to get in there so badly just to hurt those bastards for what they've done, but his mentor and Krillin were trying to hold him back. Mori got the orange ball presenting it to Frieza. Here. You have what you wanted. Now you keep your word, leave this planet and never come back. Well I was just about to, but then I remembered that there are only two more Dragon Ball left for me to pick up. If you can just tell me where the last two remaining villages are then I'll gladly be on my way. Mori was outraged by this. You must be insane if you think I'll tell you where the rest of my village is just so you can torture them like the rest. I kept my word now you keep yours. Leave here. Ah you seem to be just like the rest of your race. You care too much about your own kind despite no matter what kind of horrendous torture I might bring upon you. But if you care about dying so much then I suppose I have no choice in the matter now. Dodoria, if you may. Mora prepared a stance to defend himself. Go. Run away from here children. It is not safe. He yelled at the kids, which one of them nodded in fear as one of them grabbed his younger brother running as fast as he could to get away from the upcoming fight that was supposed to happen. Dodoria fired a beam from his mouth that looked like it was headed straight for the elder, but it went past him, instead it went right for one of the Namekian children, and unfortunately the younger one of the two got caught in the blast. Mori turned his head to look in horror, to already see one of the children lying on the ground dead. No. It can't be, the elder muttered in utter shock at the hopeless sight seen before his old eyes. His shock had proven to be a mistake when Dodoria lunged at him and threw a punch at him hitting him square in the face. Mori took a step backwards from the hit, which had him close his eyes as well. When he opened them he saw that Dodoria was nowhere to be seen, but he didn't know that he already got behind him without noticing and Mori couldn't do anything when Dodoria wrapped his large pink arms around his throat strangling him. Mori was having a hard time to catch some air from being trapped in something like this. He could hear nothing but Dodoria's maniacal laughter ringing in his ears. Then suddenly everything went black from him as Dodoria snapped his neck and that was it. The old Nemec's pupils were gone and Dodoria let go of him as he fell down on the ground. Those monsters, they need to pay. Gohan growled, he wanted to get in there to pummel them on the ground and save whoever was left in this field. Gohan I know how you're feeling, but you can't just play hero now. Krillin said. The last Namekian child was on the verge of tears right now. There was nothing but fear and terror running course through his young body right now. 
He tried to run away for his life, but he saw Dodoria reappearing in front of him. This made him stop his tracks, as at this point he grew terrified. Well look who we have here, another runt for me to kill, well at least you'll hardly be any trouble for me to deal with, a dark chuckle escaped from his lips, his pink arm raised in the air ready to take away the child's life once and for all. That was it. He couldn't take it anymore. He just couldn't it. Every ounce of Gohan's anger that was bottled up inside him just broke now. I can't take this anymore. Leave him alone, the boy said jumping from his hidden position making his reveal. He was getting called, but he ignored them, all what he was focusing on was to save the kid, and nothing more. Frieza looked at him with a perplexed look, as he clearly didn't expect someone like him to show up. Dodoria on the other hand looked confused at who was talking to him. Hey who's there? Come on. Show yourself, he looked around to see where the voice was coming from. Suddenly Gohan appeared in front of him kicking him right to the face hurling Dodoria making him go through a house. That's what you get you jerk. Gohan said with a smirk. Why don't you fight someone your own strength? Dodoria got out of the rumble. He was in and he glared at the boy. And just who the hell are you kid? Where did you come from? Well no matter, you're gonna be dead just like all the other MMMNGH. Then Piccolo appeared landing a kick of his own on Dodoria's face making the pink giant fall down on the ground. Krillin appeared as well and he quickly grabbed the confused Namekian child. Damn it Gohan. Are you trying kill us here? Well what was I supposed to do, stand there and watch him die? There's no time to argue. Let's just go now. Piccolo said with how white aura flashing around him, as he flied away to escape along with Gohan and Krillin as well. Dodoria rubbed his head in pain feeling a headache coming over him. Who the hell kicked me just now? Dodoria. What are you just standing around there for? Go after those three. Immediately. Frieza shouted at him. Dodoria got up and obeyed his lord's command. So he flied after them on his own to get those bastards. Despite his fat appearance, he was quite fast, as he kept flying over mountains below him, and in only a minute he managed to catch up with the unknown crew. Come on. We gotta hurry up or he's gonna catch us. Krillin exclaimed as he went as fast as he could while holding onto the child tightly not letting go at all. Piccolo looked over his eye and he saw that Dodoria was charging up a blast at them. He started to fire at them and all of them were trying to dodge the blasts so they don't get hit at all. However Krillin was having the most difficulty to dodge out of all of them, but unfortunately one of the blasts got to him. It didn't hit him directly, but more so it grazed him in the arm, which forced him to accidentally let go of the child as he was plummeting towards a mountain. Krillin then tried to catch him, but he thought he wouldn't be able to catch him. However Gohan managed to catch him faster than he did. Both of them started to fly away again, with Piccolo at their side. The three of them started to get away with Dodoria persuading them again. Piccolo looked behind him seeing that Dodoria was getting closer and closer by the second. Good, we should be far away enough from this guy so he doesn't come back where he was before Piccolo thought. You too. You try to find a way back to where Goku is. I'll hold this guy on my own. Are you sure that's a good idea? Krillin asked. Trust me on this. Krillin looked at Gohan's direction, whom nodded his head, and so with that they started to fly off at maximum speed that they were capable of. You sure Piccolo can handle him? The bold turtle hermit student asked. I know he will. He won't be able to just hold him off, he'll beat him for sure. Piccolo came to an abrupt stop, and so did Dodoria, who wasn't expecting him to do that in the first place. He then made a smirk. What's the matter? Did you finally accept that you're gonna die by me? Piccolo flashed a smirk of his own. I'd say that it's the opposite really. Truth is that I'll fight you by myself, so I let the others escape, he said with confidence in his voice believing that he had more than enough chance to beat him. 
This made Dodoria seem surprised before he brushed out laughing. Ha 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 ha. You? Fight me all by yourself. Don't be ridiculous. Please, you're just like any other Namek on your race. Nothing but a weakling. At best you would only be able to scratch me. Piccolo still maintained a smirk. I wouldn't be so sure about that, you'll find that I'm not like any ordinary Namekian. And just what the hell does that mean? Piccolo's smirk was gone, and it got replaced by a serious look on him. You'll find out soon enough, he then phased out of sight, and reappeared above Dodoria. Dodoria looked stunned by how fast this Namekian moved, he barely had time time to look up to see Piccolo's hammered fists smashing down on him hurling him back down. Piccolo flied down, as well catching up quickly, and he added his combo by kicking the soldier's chest harder making him shout in pain, as he was flying down till he forcefully landed through water. Piccolo landed gently on an island looking down on the water knowing that his opponent wasn't finished yet. And sure enough he was right, he saw that Dodoria jumped out of the water completely wet, and he landed on the same island he did looking at the green warrior, with a glare hinted with anger at them, but this didn't faze him at all. You damn bastard! Don't think this means anything. What you just did was nothing more than a fluke. That's all. You sure about that? Dodoria's eyes went wide with shock when he turned his head around seeing that somehow Piccolo had gotten behind him without noticing at all, this didn't make any sense to him. How could have a Namek gotten behind him, he never even saw him move. Or maybe, it could be possible that I'm stronger than you are. Didon't be ridiculous. Dodoria fully turned to throw a backhanded punch to Piccolo, who easily ducked down, but then Dodoria tried to. Use a spin kick to land a blow, but Piccolo jumped out of the way before he landed a roundhouse kick on Dodoria's face making him yell out painfully, as he fell down on the ground face planted first. The pink chubby man was slowly getting up. How? It's nothing complicated to figure out really. I was training on my way here to fave off against Vegeta, so he doesn't get his hands on the Dragon Balls here. But it turns out that there's a bigger threat than him here. Dodoria got up to charge at him again launching a fist at him, but the green Nemec caught it easily with his hand. I think we are done here. I'll w wait a minute. Hold on maybe we got off the wrong foot here. Piccolo scoffed at him, and he made his grip on Dodoria's hand harder already knowing what he was gonna say. Let me guess you want us both to work together so I could spare your life don't you? Don't be ridiculous. Why exactly would I do that after what you've done with the Namekians? It was just orders, I swear. You sure as hell look like you were enjoying those said orders what you were doing. If I recall you didn't have a single care in the world for killing them. So how about I return the favor? Piccolo formed his other hand into a fist rearing it right at Dodoria's stomach, which made large cracks, at the armor he wore but his fist still went through the armor then at the stomach, which made Dodoria cough up blood at this. Then Piccolo threw him in the air, and he started to charge a yellow blast with both his hands. Ha! The blast got fired aiming right at Dodoria, who was now screaming in terror, but his screams got shortly cut off when the blast got in contact with him, which made the force strong enough to cause an explosion. Piccolo stood still looking at the dust-covered explosion seeing and sensing that he was dead now for good. Rotten hell bastard, that's what you get for killing my people, all right then, I should get back with the others right now and see if they found a way back, he then turned around covering with white aura, as he bursted away in flight to get with Gohan and the others again. Kakarot. You there? Vegeta asked telepathically as he stood on a mountain with his arms folded looking at the green-filled sky void. Goku, who was doing some push-ups stopped when he heard the sound of his rival's voice talking in his head. Yo Vegeta, what's up? The martial artist asked, curious as to know why Vegeta was establishing a mental communication. I need to talk to you about something. The prince of all cyans said. Sure. What do you want to talk about? The naive Sai Yang replied innocently. Goku heard Vegeta taking a deep sigh, though he didn't know what for. 
Do you remember, when we first came back in time, we were talking about how we should have things remain mostly the same. So that way we could predict stuff that was already supposed to happen. Goku blinked his eyes at this. Ah, not much, why do you ask? Vegeta groaned in his head, of course you wouldn't, listen, I've been thinking lately about all this time travel stuff going on, you know how we've been training on King Kai's planet for a year, and we hardly got any stronger at all. Goku sighed in disappointment at this. Yeah, I remember. The reason why I had to take you there was because if we trained on Earth we couldn't risk your energy getting sensed by the others, since they don't really know you well. With King Kai there would be no way anyone could sense you at all. Although you do make a good point there, our strength hardly increased over that year, he sighed again. Man I wish I was already at Beerus's place so Weiss could train us again. Too bad we got to wait for a long time. On the mountain Vegeta smirked. Who said we had to wait? Outside the cave Goku had a confused expression on his face. Ah uh, what do you mean by that? What I'm trying to say is, what if we don't have to wait years for Beerus and Weiss to show up on Earth again? What if we could train with the gods more early? Now this piqued Goku's interest. That actually sounds pretty good. But wait, wouldn't that mess with the time thingy? Vegeta shrugged. Well maybe not too much. I doubt it would anyways. The only thing that would be different would be just us becoming even stronger than before, and we are already more powerful than what we are supposed to be in the first place. I don't know about you, but I'd rather get an actual training from a god than to be stuck on a small planet again. Think about it, if you, or possibly me, fight Beerus by the time he wakes up searching for a super Saiyan god again, then we'll be far stronger than ever before. Hmm. Goku hummed. Ah uh, what the heck, why not? I really wanna get stronger too. I'm tired of waiting anyways. Wait, just one question, when will we start training with Weiss? I was thinking right after Freezer gets killed. Sounds good to me, however Goku then sensed that the others were returning. In fact, they were just about to get here, but he couldn't sense that Piccolo was with them. Hey look, we'll talk later. The others are coming here right now, he said, cutting off the telepathic talk between them. Goku walked to where everyone else was, hey guys, he waved at them. Goku. Oh thank god, we made it. Krillin exclaimed with a breath of relief. Geez, you guys look pretty tired. I felt all of your energies spiking up earlier. What happened out there? And who's the kid you got there? Goku asked, noticing that Dende was with them. Ah, let's just say that, on the other side things didn't go too well. We'll explain what happened, but could we go inside the cave first? I feel exhausted, already. Sure. You guys are in luck, don't ask how put Bulma managed to put a capsule house inside the cave. Oh, well that's great. I really need to rest now. Scene change. Up in the air, Vegeta was seen flying with a thoughtful look on his face. What exactly could I do now? How could I convince the Nameks to hand me over the Dragon Balls without a fight? He wouldn't kill them of course, but perhaps there could be another way to get the balls without a fight, though he doubted that would be the case. Maybe I could convince them that I'm trying to stop Freezer from gathering the Dragon Balls, he looked around, and to his frustration he still couldn't find a single village yet. Oh for the love of now I'm starting to remember why I didn't like this planet, everything looks exactly the same here. He continued to fly for about another minute, before he suddenly stopped his tracks, gaining an idea. Wait a minute, who said I have to do the same things like in the past? At the rate I'm going through, it'll take me a while before I find a village here yet. Freezer should be still be searching throughout this damn planet, and he's flying without his ship. Suddenly he grew an evil smile on his face before he bursted laughing. Ha 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 ha. Of course. I should have thought of this sooner. With a burst of white aura, he started flying to another direction. 
As good as killing Freezer sounds right now, there is no way I'll pass an opportunity to see him get humiliated, make him see his own failures. Just the thought of the look on that bastard's face would have killing all the more worth of the patience he was forced to endure. Only thing I would regret from this is that I should have done this sooner. Scene change. And that's the whole story. Krillin said, as he put his drink down on the table, as he has explained everything that had he and the others have experienced on the other side. Geez, this turned out to be more complicated than all of us thought, huh? Goku remarked. Say, you said before you got chased right. How did you manage to get away? I took care of him myself. The good news is that he wasn't much of a challenge to deal with, so we don't have to get worried of getting tracked down. Piccolo said, with his arms folded. While everyone else were discussing this, the small Namekian boy kept glancing nervously at the strangers who have saved his life. He made gulp before gathering the courage to talk, um, excuse me, but who are you people? Everyone looked at him with perplexed looks, as if they forgot he was here with them. I do not mean to be rude, but I need to know who are you people. And how do you know so much about the Dragon Balls? Piccolo stepped in to talk this time. I know this may be hard to believe, but on a planet where we are from, we have Dragon Balls that are very similar to your own. You see, there was a young Namekian that was around your age that was sent to a planet called Earth, due to from what I heard, a terrible weather condition. The Namekian on that planet created the Dragon Balls. Up until recently, there was someone who tried to use those for their own benefits, and he somehow knew about your planet and went after your people. So we figured that if the creator of our world could create something like this, then it would be obvious that something like on this planet would exist as well. We came here to stop the person after the Dragon Balls, but that might be harder than we thought. Dende nodded his head. I see. So that explains a lot. Thank you but I have another question, those men that terrorized my people, is the person you're looking for with them? Piccolo stiffed for a moment before continuing, I'm not sure to be honest. I have no idea who those other guys were till just recently. But I promise you, we will get to the bottom of this. Promise. Ha, huh, I'm not sure if it's me or if Piccolo is getting gentle now. Well, if it's what I think it is, then that's already a good sign. Goku thought with a smile. Ha, huh, I'm surprised Piccolo. I didn't you think you'd be the one to ever make promises? Are you getting soft now? Bulma remarked with a teasing smirk. Piccolo glared at her. Shut up. It's not what you think it was. Guess he won't admit it. So easily. A, should have figured it wouldn't be that easy. Goku thought. Hey guys. Krillin spoke again, which saved Piccolo from any more future teasing. If everyone else is collecting these dragon balls and collects all seven of them, then don't you think we should find one and hide it somewhere? That way, it could be harder for Vegeta and that freezer guy to find them, he suggested. I don't think that's such a good idea. Gohan interjected this. That's only gonna make them angrier, and they would just continue to torture every single Namekian till they find what they are looking for. Oh, I guess you got a good point. Then the green Namek boy widened his eyes in shock, as if he had just remembered something. Oh no, if that is the truth then. He got up from his seat, please. You must come with me to the Grand Elder, right away. He will know what to do. The Grand Elder. Who's that? Is that like your king or something? Bulma asked. Dende looked at her with a confused look, having no idea what she meant. I have no idea what that is, but the Grand Elder was the sole survivor of our planet when the awful weather happened. He was the one who gave birth to all of us. He takes good care of me and the rest of my 107 brother and sisters. Why exactly do you refer to him as a he? If he gave birth, then wouldn't that make him a woman? How was he able to give birth anyways? Bulma pointed, albeit with confusion noticed. Whoa, man. 
I don't know what that is. But it's simple as to how he gave birth, he just hatched us with eggs that came out of his mouth. Dende said, with casualty as if he was talking about the weather. Bulma on the other hand, looked slightly sick by the mere thought of what the little boy just told her. Ah oh, yeah sure. That's not totally weird or anything. You know what, just forget I ever said anything. Piccolo grunted in annoyance. Look, this is all fascinating and everything, but what does this have to do with this so-called Grand Elder? Are you meaning to tell me that he has the Dragon Ball as well? Yes, he does. Great, figured as much. If that's the case, then we'll have to go immediately before Freezer or Vegeta beat us to the punch there. Otherwise, they'll forcefully take the Dragon Ball away from him. Beads of sweat were starting to form on Dende's head as fear began to take over. One of you must come with me right now. We have to warn the Grand Elder before it's too late. I'll go with you. Piccolo stood up from the seat. If you point me the directions where this elder of yours is, then I should be able to get both of us there in time. Plus, I got more than enough speed to get there. Hey Piccolo, try to be careful out there. Without those scouters, no one should be able to sense you. But I think Vegeta might be capable of sensing energy as well. Goku said. Piccolo huffed before he started walking out. Who do you think I am? I'm more than capable of taking care of myself. I don't need you to tell me that, he exclaimed as he and Dende walked out of the capsule house. Then before they knew it, they heard the sound of flying going away. Scene change. What is taking Dodoria so long? Surely he should have been back by now. Taking care of those runts should have been easy enough. Zabin remarked, having no idea of what has happened since he wasn't capable of sensing energy naturally. Why bother worrying? If Dodoria isn't capable of taking care of some children and a Namek, then what use is he anymore? Freezer said coldly. Forget him. Right now your task is to track down the rest of the remaining Dragon Balls. It shouldn't be too hard, since there aren't many villagers left. I suppose I will just take back the rest of these to the ship then, the Dragon Balls started to float from the ground as they were circling around Freezer. You two split up, that way you can search the other remaining balls faster. Before they could even must up their words, they heard a large explosion coming by. This attracted their attention as all of them looked at the direction where the explosion was occurring. Freezer seemed to be confused and surprised by that. Ha, huh, that's a little odd. Where exactly is that coming from? Zabin squinted his eyes, narrowing them further up ahead to see exactly where that could be coming from. A few seconds pass before he was struck with a shocking realization. My lord, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that the place where our ship has landed, he asked with a hint of nervousness shown in his voice. Freezer looked at his top lieutenant with a somewhat confused look. He took a closer look he could somewhat see that this did seem to be the direction where his ship has seemed to land. Freezer's face slowly twisted from confusion to sheer anger. Zabin, I want you to investigate what caused this explosion. If it did come from my ship, I want you to find the person that did and bring him to me, alive. Yes, my lord. Without a second thought Zabin flied toward where the explosion was still happening. Scene change. It felt like several hours had passed since they had filed by, but nevertheless both Namikians had thought they had made it towards their destination, as they could see there was a small alien house that stood on a tall cliff. Is this is the place? Piccolo asked while carrying Dende between his shoulders. Yes. That is the place. Dende nodded, confirming the location they were heading for. Piccolo flew by the cliff till he made it, as he planted his two feet on the surface, putting Dende down as well. If you ask me, this doesn't really seem much of a good place to hide in. Don't you think it's a little, too revealing, he commented. Before Dende could reply back, the main front entrance opened up by itself. In fact it seemed to be floating by itself, 
completely defying gravity. Outside stepped a person, a Namikian that looked like a spitting image of Piccolo himself, albeit with different clothes placed on him. For a brief moment Piccolo looked stunned by this, seeing a same version of himself walking. Dende. I am relieved that you have made it safely, along with our visitor. For a few seconds Nail had stared at Piccolo. The two of them stared back at one another before Nail looked at the young child again. The Grand Elder has been aware of the dark clouds that loomed above our planet. Dende frowned. So the Grand Elder has been aware of all the horrible things that were happening then. Well that simplifies things. The less explaining we have to do, the better. Piccolo said. Nail, wait. If the Grand Elder knew everything what was happening, why can't both of you hide somewhere? This whole place would just be obvious for those bad guys to find. Dende exclaimed with concern. Nail sighed in disappointment. Believe me, I wanted to do the same as well. But unfortunately, due to his old age there is nothing much I can do from here besides stay by his side for as I can. To him, it was frustrating that couldn't do anything to help his people. It was infuriating. Come with me. The Grand Elder wishes to see you both, he said, as he walked back inside the small house. Piccolo and Dende walked by him while Piccolo took a glance at Nail again, this guy looks like he could take care of himself in a fight. So far he's the strongest Namekian I sensed on this planet, he thought to himself, as the three of them flew above in the air before they reached what seemed like an upper floor from the ground. Welcome. Piccolo looked stunned again when he took a look at the Grand Elder, who was sitting a large chair. He looked so old, so frail, and quite ill as well. Ah, that's strange, you must forgive me but, I do not recall seeing you here, the Grand Elder, known as Guru remarked with what Piccolo could only assume was a blank expression. Piccolo knew he was referring to him. Actually, you did, well, sort of. When your planet was in crisis, one of your kind has escaped and traveled across the stars on a planet called Earth. On that planet, he created the Dragon Balls in order to become a Guardian Dash, it wasn't much, but Piccolo could tell that the Elder had a look of surprise on his face. But unfortunately for him, he couldn't do that as there laid an evil within him that held him back from what he wanted. As a result, he split himself in two halves, one good, and one evil. Traveled across the stars you say? Ah yes, I remember now. Before the crisis, there was a gifted child that belonged to the dragon tribe. It's astounding. I never thought he could make it. But if what you say is the truth, that he split himself apart, then I must admit, it's a shame that he had wasted his genius capacity on something like this. Perhaps if he became one again, he could have saved our planet as of this moment. Guru stated. Could you step to my right? Ah, sure. Despite his confusion Piccolo stepped forward to Guru's right side before he felt his hand touch his head. Suddenly he felt some kind of a mental tug that got pulled within him. It wasn't anything painful, but rather strange. He felt Guru's hand leave him. Ah, so you do speak the truth after all. Did you see through my past? Piccolo asked. Yes, along with your intentions. I apologize for that, but it had to be done. Guru reached his hand to grab a dragon ball that was sitting at the top of his chair. He gave it to Piccolo. Thank you but, this isn't really what we are looking for though. Nonsense. You need it far more than I do though I would suggest that you must hurry up to collect them before it's too late. My time in this world is only a few days away till I part ways. If that happens, then the Dragon Balls will cease to exist as well. Guru explained. Before Piccolo could say anything, Nail beat him to the punch. Wait, Grand Elder. If it's not too much to ask, do you think it would be possible if you could unlock his? Potential. Unlock my potential. What does that mean? Ah yes, I have nearly forgotten. Stand still, this will only take a moment. 
Guru gently assured, as he put his hand on Piccolo's head again. He stood again, but this time, Piccolo felt power surging through him. He was in shock of this sudden development. Guru let go of his hand, letting Piccolo check himself out from his new power. I'm not sure how you did this, but however you did it, it feels incredible. Piccolo clenched his fist, with a smirk crossing over his face. Do not mistake in Piccolo. Though your power is far greater than before, I do not think it will still be enough to take down these monsters that continue to terrorize our planet. However, if you had fuses with your other half, perhaps this wouldn't be a problem. Piccolo scowled. Kami isn't here right now, is he? And even if he was here, I still wouldn't fuse with him. There was a reason why that old fool and I split apart. I prefer fighting my battles by myself. Such a proud warrior, I figured you would refuse this. So how about you fuse with Nail instead? Huh? Wait, Grand Elder please dash Nail protested, but Guru cut him off. It's all right my friend. No. It's not all right. I'm sorry Grand Elder, but I cannot do that. Someone must stay here to protect you. Nail, what choice do we have anymore? I'm only days away till I finally reach my end. Perhaps it would be better this way, the situation is becoming more and more dire by the second. Please do this for your people. Nail clenched his fists hard while lowering his head down. Should he really do this? If he does this, then no one will be able to protect the elder, which was his job to do. He would be vulnerable against an open attack. However, he knew he couldn't disobey his orders. It appeared that this would be his last mission as well. Nail took a deep sigh before looking at his superior with clear eye contact. All right, if that is what you wish me to do. At least I won't fuse with Kami. The more power I get, the better. Piccolo thought. So how exactly do we do this fusion thing? Just put your hand on Nail's chest, and he will do the rest. Piccolo looked a bit skeptical at that instruction, but nevertheless he did what he was told to do. He put his hand on Nail's chest and there was nothing but silence filling the room. Then, Nail's body started to glow in a vibrant blue energy, which took Piccolo by surprise. It was as if Nail was being absorbed by him, and he wasn't doing anything to do that. It wasn't long before the blue energy was gone, and Nail was nowhere to be seen anymore. Piccolo stood in pure, or at the insane power boost he could feel surging within him. No way, I feel incredible. Now then, you know what you must do next don't you? Wait. What about the dragon ball? Piccolo looked at Guru with a smirk. Oh believe me, I know. Thank you for this. I appreciate it. And don't worry about that. I'll take it back when I'm done. He flew down below before he flowed through the open door at full speed, charging so fast that it was causing the oceans to start shaking and the lands were cracking. I'm coming for you next, Vegeta. Scene change. It took a while, but Zabin had made it towards where the explosion happened. However he became confused when he saw that there was nothing here anymore. Just the same old waters, lands, mountains and cliffs. I don't get it. Surely I headed towards the right direction, didn't I? So, why isn't anything here? Cause there is nothing to be seen there dumbass. Zabin looked up to see who said that. But he the moment he looked up he could see Vegeta double slamming his head with his fists sending him flying down on an island. Zabin picked himself up off the ground before he got up and saw Vegeta hovering below him before he stood in front of him, with arms folded giving a cocky smirk. Well, well, if it isn't my old friend Zabin. It's been a while since we last saw each other. Vegeta. Zabin rubbed the lower blood that dripped from his mouth. What are you doing here? Oh come on. Even you of all people should know why I'm here. I'm only here so I could beat the living shit out Freezer. Zabin scoffed in annoyance by this. Look, I do not have time to listen to your delusional fantasies. 
Normally I would be laughing at you, but I'm on a very tight schedule at the moment. So, the very least you could do is tell me if you saw anyone that was responsible for that explosion. Heh. You're looking at him right now. Zabin's mouth was agape. He knew Vegeta was very reckless, but to this extent, he couldn't be possibly this stupid. Vegeta, don't tell me you blasted what I think it was. Oh trust me, it was. That was indeed Frieza's ship I blasted. Before you ask where it is, it's underwater, with all of the remaining broken pieces remaining as well. Why you would you do this? Zabin asked more fiercely. Why wouldn't I? I always hated. Frieza. Always did. Always will. I think it's about time I put you in your place, you insolent monkey. Zabin yelled, as the anger within him finally snapped. He charged forward at Vegeta, throwing his fist at the prince. Vegeta phased behind him and put his hand at the back of Zabin's head. Vegeta's hand started to glow with a burning yellow energy. Zabin could only stand still, with the look of fear now grasped at his face. Sorry, but I am not in the mood to deal with weaklings at the moment. Without any second thoughts running by, Vegeta mercilessly fired a powerful energy blast that went through Zabin's whole body. Zabin couldn't even mutter his cries, as the whole body evaporated into nothing but dust. Well, that takes care of that. Vegeta said, with a casual tone as he dusted his gloves off. With the ship destroyed, that saves everyone the trouble of having Frieza call the Jinyu Force to be here. It wasn't until he sensed some sort of powerful energy heading his way. This clearly drew his attention. Who in the world is that? Is that Frieza? No. It's different, it's Piccolo, he blinked his eyes as confusion stretched his face. Wait, how can that be? From what I can remember, he was never this powerful in Namek. So how did he get so strong in such a short time? He could feel him approaching a lot closer as the seconds passed, well, I suppose I won't know it till I figure it out, won't I? All right then, let's see how you fare up this time around, he snickered to himself as Vegeta cracked his knuckles. It didn't really take too long for him to show up. If Vegeta had to guess, he would say that it took around five minutes for Piccolo to show up as he flew past him before he stopped his tracks, standing in the air behind Vegeta's back. Well, well, isn't this a turn of events? Vegeta said, with amusement shown as he turned around to face the much stronger Namekian, whom in return turned around to face Vegeta as well. I'm curious as to know how you got so strong, in such a short amount of time no less. Piccolo made a small smirk, well wouldn't you like to know? Hate to break it to YA, but that's something I gotta keep to myself. You're persistent. Look who's talking, you're the one who couldn't stand against losing to Goku, so you decided to run off to my home planet, grab those dragon balls for a wish probably for something petty, and use that to get back at Goku. Piccolo insulted him, with a sly grin shown on him. This got Vegeta irritated. His right eye was twitching and the smirk that was on him was replaced by growling scowl. Why you, you dare insult me? I just did. What are you gonna do about it? Vegeta stood still for a moment before he charged straight at Piccolo. He went to strike with his elbow raised, which Piccolo went to block with his elbow as well. The two of them rippled a shockwave from the blow they made. Vegeta and Piccolo let go before clashing with their left fists that sparkled some lighting. Piccolo went to raise his leg to kick Vegeta, but the proud prince raised his arm, blocking the kick with his wrist. The two of them split some distance from one another before they started charging at each other again from different directions, exchanging fast-paced blows all the while they kept phasing out sight, just so they could gain an advantage against one another. Eventually, Piccolo had managed to get behind Vegeta, and he threw a punch at the back of his head. Unfortunately to him, Vegeta had reached quickly enough to turn around and grab his arm, I must admit, he sure got a lot stronger than what I remember. I'm a little impressed. If I were to compare him, 
I'd say he should at least be capable of handling against Freezer in his third form. Vegeta compared the difference of power levels in his head, before Piccolo used his other hand to cut Vegeta's face by his sharp toenails, but Vegeta anticipated this by backing away at the last second before he kicked Piccolo on the back, sending him crashing down on an island. Gya. Vegeta started firing multiple yellow energy attacks that rained down upon his green opponent. Take this you bastard, however Piccolo had recovered quickly at the nick of time as he started flying on another direction, dodging the blasts that headed for him which destroyed the island he was previously in. White aura appeared from Piccolo as he dodged the ongoing energy blasts that headed straight for him while deflecting them them as well. He phased out of sight before appearing in front of Vegeta, delivering a swift uppercut that sent him flying back. Piccolo got closer and the two opponents started exchanging blows in the air again. It seemed that they were more evenly matched as they hit their fists, collided their knees, and so on and so forth. Scene change. Oh man, are you guys sensing this? Krillin exclaimed as everyone but Bulma were out of the cave. Sweat showed on his bald head, and there was fear from his voice, from the amount of power he was feeling on the other side. I never felt anything like this before. Gohan nodded nervously. Me too, I'm not sure if this is messing with my head, but I think one of those huge energies that I'm sensing is Piccolo. How did he get that strong so quick? That's just not possible. Krillin shook his head in disbelief having so many questions that were forming in his head. He turned towards his best friend. Hey Goku, what do you think about this whole thing? Goku looked at Krillin with a smile, what do I think? I think I should go there to see what's happening so I can have my turn fighting. It's been a while since I've done that, he pronounced excitedly. Krillin looked at him as if he's gone mad. You can't be serious right now. Oh, I am. You two stay here. I'll check to see what's happening. Goku called out before he bursted with white aura and flies towards the massive energy signatures. Scene change. Freezer could feel his patience growing more and more thin by the second. He had been waiting for Zabin's return for almost an hour now, and so far he hasn't came back at all. What the hell is taking him so long? He should have been back by now, his tail kept slapping against his hover chair. You know what, screw this shit, Pink Aura started surrounding him as Freezer started to float away from his chair, since everyone is becoming useless on this shit of a planet, then I'll have to do the job for them, and show them how it's done. Freezer shouted to no one. But it didn't matter really, he was blinded by anger. And so with that he took off towards the direction where the explosion came from before, which unknown to him, was the same direction that Piccolo and Vegeta were fighting in. Like and subscribe.